I'm Mei Shan Chu. My work comes from a very personal place, but takes its title from Mao Zedong's pre-cultural revolution movement, the Hundred Flowers Movement. The work is called Let a Thousand Flowers Bloom, after the classical Chinese poem, which goes something like this. Let a hundred flowers bloom, let a hundred schools of thought contend. Meaning that in a great society, the arts uh, and academia should be able to flourish. And as a consequence of this great declaration of Mao, um, the artists and academics came out of hiding and there was a brief flowering of culture at the time. This is what I'm most interested in, is the artists um, and people who needed to express themselves to live for this beautiful idea, this beautiful idea of, um, of culture and society, although ultimately, and perhaps they knew it, to be uh, quite fatal. The danger in the images are always outside the frame. And as a viewer, we may recognize that quite easily and we may want the characters in the images to, to have a happy ending, but ultimately it may not be consequential in the face of the present and the beautiful moment. The actors in my images are either Pan-Asian Americans or Americans who are uh, artists or academics specializing in Chinese studies or culture. The uniforms come from a Beijing photo studio where they reenact cultural revolution propaganda imagery for, for foreign tourists. There's also the, the dresses, which are qi pals or qiong um, which are traditional Chinese clothing that is now considered by modern Chinese as being outmoded or obsolete. And these were um, created by me. The photographs are purposely staged and has various components which reflect my, my own evolution as a person. There is a Indonesian folkloric elements, the classical Western Renaissance structure in many of them, the forced propaganda staging, and the Chinese and Eastern symbolism. The, the work had its genesis in this sort of growing inner divide within myself when there was an increasing Chinese investment uh, in, in the U.S. and I felt this sort of schizophrenia in terms of my own identity um, being both Eastern and Western. The photographs are a mock annexation of the United States of America by the Chinese, the Chinese takeover of the U.S. Growing up as a Chinese minority in Indonesia, we lived in a way not so different from living for a beautiful idea. We didn't know when the next persecution would be, but we lived in, in the present. And it's not dissimilar to how we are all living today in, in places which are urbanized and where technology has set in, where this sort of mass culture is, is permeating. And we live also in a sort of a, um, in a dream culture where we invent things and reinvent things constantly as the ground keeps shifting. And what we view as culture and how we view ourselves um, is constantly being reinvented. I, I feel that this is really what is the most important with what is happening today and what, what I see, and that the future today, our idea of the future is much more da daunting than our past futures, um, and, but no more so than this notion of living for, for the beautiful moment or this idea of what it can be. Growing up in a post-colonial environment uh, in a village in Indonesia where being Chinese was outlawed, um, 
speaking in Chinese, writing in Chinese, having a Chinese name. Um, these were all forbidden by the government. We had a, a rootlessness. We were given different names, um, everyone in my generation, for different potential futures because we didn't know what would happen. And we, we knew that you know, the status of the Chinese in Indonesia was you know, very much like uh, the status of the Jews in pre-World War II Germany. It, um, every 10 years or so, something would happen. And um, so if we, we were given a Chinese name, an Indonesian name, um, and um, a Western name, and a name by the Catholic Church. My, in my work, it's uh, so important, uh, the quality of light that, that moves and permeates through it, showing different realities and different notions of truth and who we are. When I was a, a child, my grandparents would wake me up at five in the morning every Sunday, um, and we would walk an hour to church. And the church um, with a Dutch uh, missionary priest was the only Western building in the village. At 6 a.m. every day, because we were on the equator, so the sun would rise at the same time every day of the year, the sun would come up and it would go through the stained glass windows. And to me, this was like kind of magic. You know, we were always somewhat in awe of, of the West and um, it held this, this kind of promise. And this influenced me um, throughout my life, um, this idea of light and how it could signify something or reveal something. Because my work is about identity, it's, it, it deals with a lot of different ambiguities within us, and also there's a strong sense of the feminine, maybe not so much as the feminist as, as an explanation of the feminine self um, and selves. Um, and I play with the idea of, um, of gender, gender ambiguity um, as, as part of that. Let a Thousand Flowers Bloom portrays a Kafkaesque future Chinese takeover of the United States of America. Taking its cue and title from classic Chinese poetry, Mao's doomed pre-cultural revolution campaign and Ansel Kiefer's body of work of the same name, it engages the constitution of the future, specifically with respect to globalism, the identity of the self and the self-view, the social landscape post-colonialism, my work organically has multiple layers. Although they have a folktale romance about them, they have a deep reality underneath. I do not skirt away from provocative subjects, but approach them in different ways within the image. Sometimes I feel viewers need to look at themselves. A ferocious truth and tenderness do coexist inside. Our sense of individual identity becomes linked to something ever-shifting and transient.